Alright guys, so today I have some more good news regarding PlayStation that I wanted to bring to you guys. I thought it was certainly worth taking some time to talk about. It has to do with Sony coming out here once again, going on the record, letting us know that they are currently in the process of looking to possibly acquire more studios as first party, or maybe even build a few studios from the ground up. We know that they are already currently building a studio, kind of somewhat in secret, that I believe is San Diego based, if I'm not mistaken. And supposedly this team, it's going to be a big team, a AAA team, and I think there's some Naughty Dog talent that's going to be there as well. They are being created, or the studio is being created, I should say, to continue the Uncharted series in some way, shape, or form, which is very interesting, sounds very promising as well. And a lot of people would sit here and say that, you know, there's really no need for Sony to actually have to do this, considering their position. They don't need to go out here and acquire new studios. They don't need to actually build new studios. And while you may be right, there is ne isn't necessarily a need, considering the position they're in, I would argue that it's actually a very smart thing for them to be doing. And it's good for us, for obvious reasons as well. I think it's really good to see that Sony isn't getting complacent. They're not becoming arrogant. They are very aware of the position they're in, and they are aware that they could lose that position if they become complacent. When you're in first place, when you're on top, you have to make sure all your bases are covered and you have to make sure you're not just suddenly coasting because when you do that, you leave yourself open to suddenly be taken over and before you know it, somebody's ahead of you and you're just looking around like, what happened? And it's good to see that Sony's not allowing themselves to get into that position. Uh, we're going to go over uh, something that J Jim Ryan had to say here that not only lets us know uh, once again that they're looking at new studios, but also emphasizes once again the importance of exclusive content when it comes to uh, Sony and PlayStation and the uh, upcoming PS5, which I'm all about. So it says, we could see the Sony Interactive Entertainment family grow even more. While nothing concrete has emerged, SIE CEO Jim Ryan confirmed that the company is at least considering acquiring even more studios and game companies. Ryan gave the news in an interview stating that increasing competition in the video game industry could push Sony to increase the number of studios under its control. With established giants like Google entering the fray, Ryan emphasizes the importance of exclusive content, saying it's becoming more important than ever before. Now, I think that it's really important to highlight um, this last comment he makes, where he believes that exclusive content is more important now than ever before. I have to 100 percent agree with that statement because even though there's some people who maybe are against the idea of exclusivity and exclusive content and exclusive games I understand where you're coming from but at the same time I also feel as though it's really important for each platform holder in order to establish their own identity now there is a big difference between Sony deciding to cultivate their own studios their own talent and their own games from the ground up you know versus if they were to go out there and just buy an exclusive game you know what I mean like buy a third party pay them to make their game exclusive that would be a different story that's not necessarily fair and that's not necessarily good Sony I think is doing it right um, with the way they're approaching their first party content and their outlook we do know that they are going to be putting a big emphasis on third-party relationships as well, so we're going to see how that pans out, but if there's something that has been proven this generation with the PS4 is that those third-party relationships seem to help them very much, but I think it's great, honestly. I think it's great that Jim Ryan is out here letting us know, hey, we are open to buying new studios. We're currently in the process of looking at it. We look at what Shuhei Yoshida has been doing, where he's been visiting these studios trying to build relationships potentially inquiring to you know to them like hey are you guys willing to be acquired are you open to being acquired can we strike a deal he's been visiting remedy entertainment housemark and who knows what other studios that maybe he's just not putting on the record here so it's going to be interesting to see how this all pans out it's going to be interesting to see which studios sony may potentially end up acquiring we've been speculating for a long time about the different studios that Sony has a relationship with that just makes sense. We think about studios like Insomniac Games, for example. A lot of people have been raising the question, why hasn't Sony already acquired Insomniac Games considering their relationship, you know, with, and now they have Spider-Man, you know, they've had Ratchet and Clank. And I would say that it's most likely the case that Sony has tried many times by this point 
to acquire Insomniac Games, but Insomniac Games let them know that they value their independence too much and that they just want to keep it a second party relationship, which which is fine. We we've seen that Sony can have very very healthy second party relationships that can last very long periods of time such as in the case of Insomniac Games. So I just want to put that out here because there's probably a good chance that Sony has tried to acquire a studio like this. It would be insane to think that they didn't, right? We also think about Kojima Productions. I think there's a very good chance that at some point Kojima Productions could end up being folded into Sony as a first party studio. We know Kojima's relationship with Sony. We know he likes Sony and we know that um, you know, Sony is willing to uh, give his studio a lot of money and a, and a lot of funding to, you know, to, to see a game like Death Stranding get off the ground. Uh, Sony clearly believes in Kojima and his ability, so there's another one that could potentially happen. We also think about some others. We know Shuhei Yoshida visited Remedy Games. We've been talking about them a little bit. He visited Housemark. Um, and we also think about Blue Point games. A lot of people would say that Blue Point is certainly going to end up being the studio that, if any, is going to get acquired. It's going to be them. It just makes total sense. And I have to agree with that. I think that would make sense. I think that would be smart. And I think that is something that is eventually going to happen. But overall, I, I'm just happy to hear a lot of the things that Sony's saying. And this is why I like making this content to, to let you guys know, like, listen, this is, you know, this is the mindset that the executives have over at Sony running PlayStation. And honestly, I think it lines up with what us, the consumer, the gamer, what we want mostly, not in every case, but in almost every case, you know, hearing that they're, they're still placing a huge importance on the PlayStation 5 and it matters to them. And then a lot of people say that this is what Sony's been doing the whole time. And I agree, yeah, it seems like they have been and they're sticking to their guns, which is a great thing. But I would I would say that it's it's even more important that they're doing it now because things are changing. You know, the, the competition that they're facing is competition that's attempting to uproot things that have been established for a long time. You know, uh, they do mention Google here and Sony's a smart company. They're not just going to sit idly by and laugh at Google and make it seem like Google it could not one day eventually become a threat to them within the gaming industry because even though they don't see them as an immediate threat right now, they do see them as a mid to long term threat, which is smart of them because Google is a massive company and even though we poke fun at them and we laugh at Stadia, we do have to realize that they have the capital, they have the money to be able to uh, stay within this industry and go through some major downs before they maybe eventually see an up and Sony needs to be aware of that. They are still taking Xbox and Microsoft seriously as competition and even though again a lot of us kind of poke fun and laugh because it's like Sony's so ahead you know they're, they're doing things so right they have nothing to be worried about it's smart of them to do this they do not want to get complacent that would be the worst thing for everybody if that's what they decided to do so the very last thing I do want to mention here at the end of this video that I thought was worth bringing up is how during this I guess interview or whenever they were talking to the Wall Street Journal it basically came out that Sony thinks that PlayStation as a brand is too big for indie developers to ignore and the reason why they ended up saying this was because there was some concerned raise raised I'm assuming by investors or by some some individuals where they feel like you know are indie developers and indie studios being thrown under the bus in favor of AAA games and I have to be real with you guys here I don't think there's anything wrong in what Sony has been saying about this situation we have to look at the facts and there's over a thousand indie games that are on offer on the PlayStation Store. They're not going anywhere. Sony's not coming out here saying that they don't welcome indies and that indie developers are not allowed to publish on their platform or anything like that. That's not the case at all. All Sony's doing is saying that we've seen the success our big AAA titles have had on our platform and how good of a job they've done in selling hardware for us. We've seen the reception. We've seen the hype that you know is generated around each AAA title we release that's of high quality, and they're going to double down on that. They're going to double down on what works. Did they have to lean heavily on uh, indies 
at the beginning of this generation with the PS4? Yes, they did. And I think it was a mutual benefit. But, you know, PlayStation is in a different position right now. I'd say they are in a much better position. And it's just smart of them, in my opinion, going into next generation, them knowing they're going to have to sell hardware again. They're going to have to sell the PS5. What's the best way to do that? I'll tell you, the best way is to show the big, exciting games that leave people with their jaws on the floor and 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 make them say, you know what, I'm there day one, sign me up. And Sony's been doing an absolutely phenomenal job at that, especially towards the later half of this generation, and they want to just build on that going in the next generation. So I think people need to chill out. Sony, the, is the statement, is it a tad bit arrogant? Yeah, maybe, but at the same time, it's not wrong. That's the thing. Like, Sony's not wrong. Whoever's saying this at PlayStation, they're not wrong. PlayStation is too big of a platform for indie developers to just forego and ignore and act all mad because they, you know, their focus lies elsewhere. Sony has just, you know, come out here and said, look, we believe that at this point, going into next generation, indie games are not going to be what sells our hardware. And I completely agree with that, especially these smaller ones that look like they could be played on smartphones or tablets. The thing that's going to sell their hardware best are those big, exclusive AAA games that you can only get on PlayStation. And it just really makes me happy to see that Sony is aware of that, and they're going to be doubling down on that, and they're going to be pushing that harder. And, you know, do indie developers have a right to be upset over this maybe a little bit i guess but at the same time again sony's not coming out here saying oh forget indies we don't need them you know uh they mean nothing to us and they're not welcome on our platform they're not doing anything like that so i think people need to calm down you know reevaluate the situation and realize that indie games are everywhere on the playstation store but just because Sony's not going to be, you know, leaning on them so heavily going into the PS5, that doesn't mean that that's going to be a bad thing. It just means that they're they're being smart in their approach. So that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you found some of this information useful. Uh, if you did, be sure to leave the video a like. It really helps it out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.